I'm Kaylee, and today I'm going to tell you about my favorite modern TV shows. So I already did a video about my favorite retro TV shows, like from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And now I'm going to tell you about my favorite TV shows from the last 20 years. I don't really have these in any particular order, but I am going to tell you about some of my like top 10 or 15 favorites. Like these are the ones that I just keep going back to and watching again and again and I super, super love. And then I'll kind of just tell you the names and um, you know, maybe show you a poster or something of the other ones because I just don't have time to talk about all 25 of my favorite modern TV shows. Please do leave me a comment down below and let me know what is one of your favorite TV shows. Okay, let's jump in with this list. Uh, one of my favorites is Sherlock. As many of you know, I do love Sherlock Holmes books and stories and uh, Sherlock Holmes movies. You know, I just love the character of Sherlock Holmes and the mysteries and Sherlock Holmes is just so iconic. So to have it redone in a modern setting um, with entirely new characters, some of them, and you know, a new modern twist on some of these old mysteries, you would think that I would be a purist and be like, that's not the way Sherlock really is. <laughs> but I tend to think of this Sherlock as just like this totally different thing. Like it's just been reimagined with sort of a nod to the old Sherlock, you know, the original Sherlock Holmes. Um, but it, I just think of it like it's its own separate thing. And so it doesn't bother me when things are changed or things are different. What I really love about this show is the mysteries. They are just so gripping. You just never know what crazy plot twist is gonna happen next. It just, it's just wonderful. The acting, of course, is perfection. Absolute perfection. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch is wonderful in this. Another favorite British show is Doctor Who, but I am not just a fan of everything Doctor Who. My favorite doctors are Doctors 10 and 11, which are played by David Tennant and Matt Smith. And the rest of it, I can kind of take it or leave it. Like, I'll, I'll watch it, sure, and it's fine. I have not seen the last few seasons of Doctor Who. After Doctor 12, I was just kind of like, I don't, I don't know. So I guess I'm just not a true fan, and that's fine with me. I just didn't enjoy it. I can't pretend to enjoy it. You know, um, so I'm not a real Doctor Who fan. I am sorry. I really love the imaginative storylines in Doctor Who. I love the amazing acting and um, just, you just never know what's gonna happen. It's always gonna be something wacky and wild and weird. <laughs> I love how the Doctor has such a big heart. He truly just wants to help people. He doesn't ever wanna see anybody suffer. And so he will jump in and go on these crazy adventures and sacrifice himself, you know, to save others. He is such a fantastic hero and he has so much like conflict between light and dark inside of himself and he's really at war with himself it seems like in almost every episode there's just such good character development in there i really like almost all of the companions i love amy i love rose my favorite companion though probably just just on her own is donna I just love Donna. She is so insane. <laughs> oh, Donna's fantastic. Okay, I could do a whole other video just talking about Doctor Who, but I'm not gonna get into it. Another favorite is White Collar. Again, this is one where I really love the mysteries. This is about a young man who has been released from prison in order to work with the FBI. So we've got this kind of tentative relationship between the former criminal and the FBI agent that he's working with. They become friends, but they don't quite trust each other. So there's always this question mark, you know, are they going to be loyal to one another or are their different personalities and their different moralities going to get in the way? One of my favorite, favorite shows is Chuck. 
Now, when this first started coming out, we were scrolling through the TV and we said, hey, dad, here's a TV show with your name, because my dad's name is Chuck. So just as a laugh, we were like, oh, let's watch it. Who knows what it is? Dad, it's your TV show. And we all started watching Chuck together and it's a wonderful family show. And so it became our custom. It became the rule. You had to sit down and everybody watched Chuck together when a new episode came out. And so I have such warm memories of sharing that with my family all that time together and we would talk over the episodes and we would laugh together because it is such a hilarious funny show all about this guy who has like all this classified information hidden away in his brain so it's full of adventure and spies and mysteries and all kinds of fun witty little one-liners it is just so hilarious and and oh so wonderful i just cannot say how much I love this show. <laughs> I will say though, like the last eight episodes of the last season, I never watched those because I did not like the direction that it took towards the end. And then usually what I'll do is I'll skip to the very last episode and I'll just watch that last episode because I do like pretty much how it ends. Um, but at the end, I was just like, what are they doing? And I kind of understand what they did because they wanted to like bring it around to this conclusion, but I was just not a happy camper. And so I never rewatched those episodes. I just rewatched the rest of it. Another favorite show is Eureka. Whenever I watch Eureka, it's kind of weird. It feels like coming home. Somehow I'm just so familiar with the show after having watched it so many times and all the characters are just such a quirky, weird little family of neighbors in this town. It's about all these crazy scientists and all their experiments are always going wrong and the sheriff has to step in and solve the mystery and figure out how are they gonna fix this. The funny thing is you've got all these genius brains and somehow it's always the dopey sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> who solves the mystery. Somehow his everyman wisdom is going to solve all their problems and stop, you know, the crazy experiment from going wrong. It's absolute perfection. I love Eureka. The sister show to Eureka is Warehouse 13. And this is another one where you have this very close knit group of people who kind of form their own friendship, their own family in this group of coworkers. And they go hunting after mysterious artifacts and uh, they have, you know, they come up against like weird magic and history. Now see, I love history and I love codes and puzzles and Warehouse 13 has a lot of that. I really love Agatha Christie's Poirot. I love the books. I love the TV miniseries. To me, David Suchet is Poirot. I can't watch any other Poirot stuff. Like they just came out with, um, uh, what is it, the Orient Express? Can't watch it. I can't, it weirds me out. To me, David Suchet is the character of Poirot. His accent is perfect. His acting is perfect. The way he looks is perfect. He just, he completely embodies the, the, the essence, the essence, you guys, of Poirot. And so I just love Poirot. It's such great murder mysteries. Poirot is so smart. And really, despite being um, a little bit self-centered, he is very kind. He is very kind to other people. He has such a complex character with a lot of um, contradictions in his personality. And that is why I love Poirot. I do love Gilmore Girls, but I did not enjoy the new like remake of it that they did, um, what is it, The Year in the Life. I did not enjoy that. I was like, what are you doing with my characters? What are you doing with their lives? They would never do that. They would never make that bad decision. What is happening? This is, this is just not okay. So I was very, very unhappy with that. I don't re-watch Gilmore Girls a lot because I find that most of the time each episode ends with some sort of bittersweet ending. There's so much conflict. It's like they're just arguing and arguing all the time. So I find that it actually ratchets up my anxiety levels. I love the characters and some of the storylines are so fun and so beautiful and the drama and everything. Um, but sometimes I just get so 
stressed out watching it because there's so much conflict and it's like it's never resolved they never resolve that conflict they just move from one argument to the next one um so i kind of have this love hate thing with come on girls leave me a comment down below and let me know what's a show that you have a love hate relationship where you you love it but then you're just like i can't deal with this it's making me stressed <laughs> my aunt actually told me you have to watch Royal Pains. And I was like, uh, I don't know about that. Because it's about these guys and they move to the Hamptons and he becomes like this concierge, concierge doctor to the rich and famous. And I was like, I don't care about some rich and famous people being fancy up in the Hamptons. Um, but I was like, fine, I'll watch it. I'll try it out. And then it was wonderful. And I got completely hooked. And I absolutely adore Royal Pains. It's kind of like... I don't know, it's like Gilmore Girls meets ER. Because <laughs> you have all of the mystery of the medical diagnosis, you know, what's wrong with the people, and it's always something crazy. You know, they never just have pneumonia. They always have some insane disease that is like scurvy or something crazy that you would just never know. And then there's also the family drama. You know I love TV shows and movies and stuff about family relationships. So it's these two brothers and they kind of, they have the sibling rivalry, but they're also very loyal and love one another. And they kind of create this little family along with uh, co-workers and other doctors and nurses who work with them very closely. So it's just funny and dramatic and it's really really a beautiful show. Burn Notice is um, set in Miami and it's this out of work spy and he kind of goes around doing good deeds and helping people out um, against like the drug cartels <laughs> and the loan sharks and all of that. So in every episode, there's some poor person who is in trouble and you know, who's gonna help them? Michael Weston, that's who's gonna help them. There's a lot of car chases and bombs and stuff being blown up and lots of uh, gunfire <laughs> and everything. But it's just, it's so funny and it's so, somehow just keeps me coming back. Cause I am not the car chase and bombs and gunfire kind of person. Um, but there's just something so heartfelt about the way that they just wanna help people, you know? So I really love it. Now we're getting down into the nitty gritty because we're gonna talk about Firefly. I don't even know if I can talk about this because it is a tragedy that there are not more seasons in this, in this series because I love Firefly. I mean, it's space cowboys. What more do you want? Everything in Firefly comes together so perfectly to just create the story and the plot and the setting and the characters and like the character development and the growth and oh my goodness, the acting, the actors, guys. It's such perfection. And I cannot talk about it anymore because I'm just gonna start to cry because it is so, so good. So of course you must know, if I'm a Firefly fan, obviously I had to follow Captain Mal over to Castle. <laughs> so this is a totally different show, but it has the same actor. And um, it's a murder mystery series where Castle is a murder writer. He writes mysteries and uh, he follows around this police detective and uh, helps her to solve murder mysteries. And that's how he gets ideas for his novels. And of course they fall in love and they have this wonderful like family camaraderie amongst the other detectives and the actual family, Castle's actual family are fantastic. It's funny, it's silly, it's dramatic because there's a lot of, you know, murder going on and stuff. So of course, I just adore Castle. I love the character development and everything. Next we have Merlin. This actually started as my throwaway show. Oh, I'll just put it on in the background while I'm cooking or, you know, while I'm doing the laundry, I'll just have it on and, and you know, watch little bits of it, but I'm not really paying attention because, you know, when it's kind of dumb and whatever. By the middle of season one, I was hooked. It was no longer my throwaway show. It was my show. And it remains my show to this day. <laughs> it is rather silly at times. The humor gets 
a little juvenile sometimes. As the seasons go on, however, it gets more and more serious. So young King Arthur and Merlin and Guinevere and, uh, and all of them, they're just so wonderful. I love the elaborate costumes and the, you know, the old timey magic and the old legends and the Knights of the Round Table and all that good stuff. I mean, it's just so fantastic. And they still do keep some of that humor in the later seasons, but it's not quite so juvenile or silly like it is in the beginning. So if you watch the first couple of seasons and you're like, this is so dumb, this is so juvenile, you know, <laughs> then just keep, just keep with it for a little while. And it does get more serious um, and more dramatic and everything later on. Speaking of juvenile humor, Another favorite is Psych. I have rewatched all of the Psych episodes and the, and the movie and whatever um, several times, three or four times, I think. But I can only take it in small doses because it is very silly. It, re <laughs> it really does have quite juvenile humor and there are so many like 80s references, like pop culture references that are very obscure and half the time I'm like, was that funny? I don't know. What is that band? I've never heard of that actor. So I don't know what joke it was that they just made. So I can only watch Psych in small doses because I will get annoyed with it rather quickly, but I still love it. They do make me laugh and they have all these funny little, you know, murder mysteries. And he pretends to be a psychic detective that works with the police department. It's just adorable. Another wonderful mystery series that I love is Monk. I think Tony Shalhoub as Monk is absolute perfection. I mean, it's no wonder that he has won all these awards and stuff for his acting on Monk. Monk has OCD and he has a lot of phobias and he has to have everything just perfect and clean. And yet he is a detective, a consulting detective with the police. I mean, don't you just love those consulting detective setups? <laughs> what I really love about Monk is despite all his phobias and his fears and his anxiety, he still gets up in the morning and goes out every day to help keep his city safe to how, I mean, the man's a hero. The man is a superhero. If you had that kind of crippling anxiety, how could you get up every day and go out and solve mysteries and help people? And he has such a big heart, like over and over throughout the series when he has a choice between, you know, cleaning something or making it perfect and doing something to help someone, he always chooses from his big heart full of love to help the person. It's just wonderful. Apparently, I just love lots of mystery stuff because the next one is Veronica Mars. Veronica Mars uh, is the daughter of a private investigator. And so she goes around doing her own little investigations uh, around the high school and later on in the later seasons in college. She's um, sort of gritty and jaded and everything, but at heart, she still carries this, this innocence. She really does have a big heart and she's very kind to people, but she puts on this facade like she's super cool and nobody mess with me. <laughs> there are a lot of layers to her character and that is what makes Veronica Mars such a cool TV show. Now, obviously I have to have Downton Abbey on this list. How can you have a list of TV shows and not have Downton Abbey on there? We all love Downton Abbey. Do I even need to say anything more? I don't think so. We all love it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say the names of some of the rest of my favorite TV shows cause I am running out of time and I can't talk about all of them. Big Bang Theory, The 4400, Fringe, CSI Miami and CSI Las Vegas, Arrow and The Flash. So that's pretty much it. Those are my favorite TV shows. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know what are some of your favorite, favorite, favorite TV shows. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and remember the right book in the right hands at the right time can change the world.